B before we start this video, a large thank you to Angelos, Prod, HLJ, Enolado, Goat, Zero Man, Martin, L, Douglas, Allen, Jonathan, Bill, Matesus, and Thankron for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And a special thank you to Chen Yiman for their immense support to the channel this month on Patreon. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, man. Thank you very much. Your support is greatly appreciated. And thank you to the commenter who gave me the proper pronunciation of this name. Hello, today we're going to be making a health system for our player and giving our zombies attacks some damage. So let's begin by clicking on our character and adding a script. I'm going to call it Player Stats Manager or Player Stat Manager. Uh, you can call it whatever you like. It's going to house our health system and some other things in the future. So I'm going to begin by deleting the start and update method. And I'm going to make a header so things look neat in the inspector. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. I'm going to call the header health. I'm then going to make a public integer variable. And I'm just going to call this health or player health. And this is public because we're going to access it from another script. So I'm just going to initialize that at 100 just to keep it simple. 100 isn't 100%. That should suffice. And now right below that, let's make a, another header. I'm going to call this pending damage. And I'm going to make an integer initialize it at 0. And the reason we're making this is because we actually need to damage the character at a specific time during an animation event. So we need to fill in this variable and then use that damage uh, during another function. So I will explain and it will make sense. Now let's go over to the zombie combat manager. And I'm just going to minimize everything. And then right up here at the top, I am going to make a header for attack damage. And now, specifically this time, uh, you can use serialized field if you want. I'm going to use public. I just enjoy doing it more, to be honest with you. Uh, public int. And then I'm going to call this grapple damage. And this will be the... I'm actually going to change that to grapple bite damage, just so it's very specific. This will be the amount of damage the zombie does with a successful grapple attack. And I'm going to initialize that at, say, 33. I'm just putting in random numbers right now. I'm not thinking too much about it. I just want to show you the functionality of it all. So... With that done, let's head over here to the Zombie Grapple Collider script. As you can see here, we're looking for a layer player, and we're playing an animation on our character when they get grabbed. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually assign some damage through this function. But before we do that, let's actually go to the Player Manager. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to call our Player Stat Manager here. We're going to make it public. And we're going to call that an awake, so we can reference that from our Player Manager script. So I'm just going to say Player Stat Manager equals Get Component Player Stat Manager because it does rest in the same game object. And then over back here in the zombie grapple collider script, right below where we make the player play the grapple animation, we're just going to say player dot player stat manager. I'm not sure why it's not letting me auto complete that. It's giving me an error. I think this is just Visual Studios kind of. Okay, that, yeah, that's fine. Never mind. So we're going to say player dot player stat manager dot pending damage is equal to, and then what we want to do is reference our uh, zombies grapple damage, which is on our zombie combat manager. So we're going to reference the zombie combat manager uh, through the zombie variable, which is our zombie manager. So we'll say zombie dot zombie combat manager, and I think we need to call that on the zombie manager script. And then we're going to say dot grapple. I think it was grapple bite damage. I'm just going to copy that just to make sure. And yeah, okay, so that's good. So now let's go to our zombie manager script and let's reference the zombie combat manager script because I believe this is a new-ish script, so I don't think it's referenced there yet. That's why we're getting that error. So let's open it up. And yes, it's not there. So right below zombie stat manager, I'm going to make a public zombie combat manager and I'm going to call that on awake. Again, it does sit on the same game object as the script, so we would use zombie, man zombie combat manager equals get component zombie combat manager. And there we go, no more error. And now we are assigning that pending damage, which is the grappling attack damage, uh, to the character's pending damage variable. So this right here, this zero, becomes 33. And now we need to actually deduct that pending damage from our total health using an event. So I'm going to make a public void called take damage from grapple. And what we want to do here is we're going to just subtract our pending damage that we've been just assigned during the grapple from the player's health. So we can simply say player health is equal to player health minus pending damage. And that's all we need to do. Now we do need to call this during a specific time in the animation. And we, we do need to check if we're dead. So if our player's health is less or equal to zero, then what we want to do is kill the player. So for that, we would need to make a new function because that's going to handle some logic. We'll have a private void kill player. And this can restart the game in the future or bring it back to a previous checkpoint, yada, yada, yada. So for now, we'll just say kill player. We want to flag as well on our player to know when our character is dead so AI can stop interacting with them and stop trying to attack them and such. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to make a new bool 
Um, it's going to be called Is Dead. And, uh, oh, yeah, the animator is bugging out there for a second. I'm going to drag in this animation, which I have, and there is a zombie animation pack coming soon. Right now it's not prepared yet, so I unfortunately cannot give you a link. Um, but this one's just a death animation. You can get a bunch of these on the Unasa store for free. Right now it's just what we're going to use when our character dies. So whatever death animation you have will suffice. Just pl uh, plug it in there and we're good to go. And you don't want to make a transition back to the empty. Do not transition the death animation back to the empty or else then you'll go back to playing your regular animations. So we're going to say under kill player. Um, what we want to do is actually put an awake method first above this. And we're going to reference our player manager. Uh, I'm going to call that player. And we're going to say player equals get component player manager because again it sits in the same game object. And then we will say player, whoops, not player group manager. We're going to say player dot player animator manager. Uh, dot play animation and I'm just going to play the animation where my character is dead. Now this works if you just get scratched but if you're in a grapple it's going to look kind of silly because you're going to play the animation suddenly and abruptly but we can deal with that too and I'm going to show you how. Um, we're going to make a public bool called is dead first off here on the player manager. I'm actually going to make a header about that too just call it status so it's very clear to see in the inspector. Uh, it is still a flag technically but I just want to separate it. You don't have to do that though. This is just my personal preference. Go ahead and you know do your own thing. Under kill player we're going to say player dot is that equals true. And uh, we're going to do a couple more things to make the animation, uh, the death animation transition nicely from the grapple because right now it would just play abruptly and we don't want that. But first let's use our animation event. So go to your grapple, your player specific grapple, and then go to the point on the animation where you want to damage the player. Uh, for me it's right here. I'm going to do it right here. And again we are releasing an animation pack for grapples and zombie bites and attacks really soon. Uh, it is not finished yet. Hopefully by the time, uh, not the next video but the video after that. We'll actually have something to show you. So I'm just going to put the animation event here for take damage from grapple. And right where that animation event strikes, I'm going to lose health. Now, let's make another death animation because we want one that's regular. And we want one to transition from the grapple. So I'm going to make a bool on the animator called is dead. And it's going to match the bool on the player manager. Okay. I'm going to drag in the death animation again. Now I'm just going to call it... Uh, what, what's a good name for this? Player underscore death underscore from underscore grapple underscore 01. So this will only be played if you die during the grapple. Otherwise, if you die just during a regular scratch, you'll play the regular death animation. So the transition isn't weird. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a transition from player grapple to empty. But on the empty state, the condition is we cannot be dead. So you go back to empty if is dead is equal to false. Otherwise, I'm going to make a transition to the dead state. I'm going to make a condition is dead equals true. And now just take this little bar here and you can see this is what the blend looks like. Just make it blend so it looks nice. So I want it right there is where the bite happens just about right there. So I'm going to blend it from there. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bleed it into itself so it looks a bit more natural. And that's almost what I want. I actually need to haul this other animation back a little bit into it. And now if I, there we go. That looks a lot better. So that's completely more uh, viable and it looks a lot nicer than just abruptly starting an animation in the middle of another. So what we're going to do on kill player, we're going to check and see if we're playing animation already. So we're going to say if player dot uh, is performing action, and then we want to say, or if, if it's not performing action, sorry, we want to play a death animation. Uh, and if the player is performing action, we're not going to do anything right now. We're going to change how that is handled a little bit in the future, but for right now, that's perfect. And then on the player manager, we're going to say is dead is equal to animator, or sorry, animator dot set bull. Uh, and we're going to set is dead, and we're going to make that equal to the is dead on the player manager. So whenever the is dead on the player manager changes, it will also change on our animator, and that will guide our animation state. Okay, so uh, right below the player dot players tab manager dot pending damage. We're going to say player dot player animator manager dot clear hand IK weights. And we're doing this in case we're holding a gun and this will clear the player's hand IK from the weapon. So the animation doesn't look silly. Otherwise you'll fall over holding on to the positions on the weapon and that will kind of make the animation look off or odd. Uh, so I'm just going to save that. If you don't have hand IK, you don't need that bit. So, uh, okay. Now this is looking good. We're almost done. Let's go over here now into the project and I'm going to open up the idle state. And what I want to do is right down here where we check and add our target, our player as a target. I'm going to put an if statement before that. And we're going to say if player dot is dead or if player um, is not dead, we'll assign them as a target. Otherwise, nothing will happen. So we can say if player dot is dead and we can put an exclamation mark in front of it, meaning if the player is not dead, 
then we can get this player as a target for our zombie. And then lastly, on the attack state, we want to make sure once the character is dead, we're not still continuously attacking if we have them as a target. So over on the attack state, right at the top, we can say if uh, zombie manager dot current target dot is dead because our current target references our player manager script, then we can just say return. And that means if the character, because by then the game will uh, we'll say return this actually, because it needs to return the state. Uh, because typically when we die, we'll just reset the scene and this will keep returning until that happens and the zombie will just stand there uh, in theory. So this should work. I'm just going to put a note here saying if our target is dead, we want to return here and do nothing. Okay, so now that's done, let's jump into the scene here. And I'm at 100 health. You can see in the bottom right, player health. This zombie should grab me. The pending should change to 33. And then when the animation event strikes, I should be on 67. And yes, there we go. So that's working as intended. Now let him grab me three more times. And then I should fall over partial, partial way through the animation. It should blend nicely. It should work. And he should stop attacking me. So round one HP. Let's see. Moment of truth. He's going to run at me. I get grabbed. There we go. The bite processes. Yes. Excellent. And now he stops attacking. So yes, that is working as intended. We are going to expand upon this heavily, but if you made it this far, be sure to drop a like. It does genuinely help out my series a whole lot. Leave a comment to appease the YouTube algorithm gods. Let's talk about real quick what's going to happen in the next episode. So in Resident Evil, uh, you get a nice little pop-up. It says caution or fine when your health changes from one state to another. I believe there's a fine and critical or danger. Anyway, it goes from green to yellow to red. So we're going to make that nice little UI pop-up. We're going to expand further upon the death system. We're going to reset the scene do a bunch of other cool things, really just start adding on to the combat of the game. We're also going to give the zombie a regular scratch attack in the near future, so that, that will be the next couple of videos, and hopefully by then I have some animations for you guys. So again, if you made it this far, guys, please be sure to drop a like, leave a comment, it does help out my channel a whole, whole lot, and I will see you guys in the next one.